Ladies and gentlemen, make up all of our contestants a hand. And now, for the talent portion of our show, ladies and gentlemen, give a please a round of applause to Tony. Y'all come this way. been my strong point, so let me keep it simple. My name is Tony. I don't want to hear nothing about no Frosted Flakes cereal. <laughs> now, <clears throat> pardon me if at any point through the course of this show I seem to go on a tangent, but I'm tired. Well, exhausted is more like it. I am everything that dreams are made of with none of the realities to my credit. People look at me and go, hey, 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 man. Go for your dreams, dog. But um, don't you have to wake up first? My name is Tony. Not to be confused with the Tony Childs off that show, Girlfriends. <laughs> Which the lady is fabulous, by the way. <laughs> but so am I. I'm the daughter of two practical parents who believes that, yes, I am fabulous. I have a fabulous spread in LA. I dine at all the fabulous restaurants. I have fabulous shoes, fabulous taste, and my bank account is just plain fab. <laughs> now I know y'all don't believe that bullshit. And before we get started, I'm gonna take these shoes off. Cause there ain't no way in hell I'm gonna be standing up in here in these stilettos all night long.
It is the things that are not easily apparent. It's called subtext. It is the implications of things not immediately felt. That's called subtext. It's like when a lady puts on a dress that she know is too small on, and she puts it on and she looks at you and he goes, oh, do I look fat in this dress? Like you knew damn well you was too fat when you put it on. But what do we do? You take your insecurity and you put it on him. So if you say the wrong thing, then you mad. That's called subtext. Hi, uh, this is Dewey. And I'm Rose Short. And we're the cast of an amazing play coming to Little Rock with an amazing voice. Would you please oh. share with us a song from the play? Okay. <clears throat> and I am telling you I'm not going You're this, the best um, man I've just, ever known um, uh, Rose, this is this is not that show. Now what now? This this is the story of us. We're doing the story of Tess. Tess, you told me this was dream girl, and you keep on that. Now we ain't gonna keep going. No, ain't nothing to talk uh, about. The story that of us yeah, coming to Arkansas, August twenty eighth at seven p.m. is obviously gonna be a lot of drama. And crap. Refuse to see that it was me. Hi, this is Dewey. And I'm Rose Short. And I play Tony in the upcoming play, The Story what? of... I play Tony. So do I. I thought you Tess. said that I didn't... Really? You threw the script on the table one. and I asked you... Hey, hey, actually guys, you, you both play Tony. One's a guy, one's a girl. Uh oh. So that's why the name was spelled it. But I asked you that, Okay, Tess. so I just learned the whole script for nothing. Yeah, exactly. But I... you. <laughs> You know, I'm over you That's right fine. now. You um, got to be like the slow, I mean, like, really, you got to be August like one of the slowest 28th, people I've ever known. Why am I paying you? At 7 p.m. Yeah, this is. What? This is not Why am I paying you? This is ridiculous. What do you think? Is it? crap. Refuse to see that it was me all alone. That's why I'm singing it slow. Hi, this is Dewey. <laughs> and I'm Rose Short. And I'm inviting you guys out to see me this Saturday night for the play. Wait, 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 wait. I'm inviting you guys out to see me this Saturday no, night. No, no, they're coming to see us this Saturday night, Dewey and Rose, in Arkansas on August the 28th. <laughs> a lot of people saw me in I the To define me. That's what they come to see. Deuces. Yeah, um. Y'all yeah, gonna just let her embarrass me like that? That don't even make sense. And crap! I used to see that it was me all alone. That's why I'm singing it slow. When I first heard about the show, um, I must admit I was really intrigued uh, just because I've, ha I've not really seen anything that kind of fits along the scope of what the show is all about. Um, 
choreographically, I, I was very inspired simply because I, I have a chance to really tell so many stories within one story, which is very unique for, um, for most choreographers. So it's a really exciting project. Part of this is just, you gotta think in the moment that, yeah, we're in this place, but don't get so engulfed into your character's story that you forget the realism of where you, what you're doing. A lot of the music uh, tells the story, which I think the audience is going to really find to be really interesting. Uh, but beyond that, it's just composed really well, and it gives the, the, the dancers on stage as well as the actors a real chance to, to be melodic with their movement, um, but really interpretive in terms of the lyrics. <laughs> It's been an interesting challenge working with Dewey, uh, simply because he's not a trained dancer. Um, but what I do find is that he has a really nice quality of movement, which any choreographer can work with. Um, he came in really open-minded, ready to embrace something new, ready to kind of go to a different place. And we really had a lot of, we had a lot of work because we had to go right back to the basics. We took it back to Ballet 101. We talked about exactly what it meant to be centered. We went through basic positions. Uh, he's learned a lot about the Horton style, which we're using a lot within this African piece. And so I think that he's really, really disciplined in the sense that he's been very open to learning and studying the pieces. Um, it's just going to be very interesting to see how, you know, all of that studying is going to, you know, really produce and, and show on stage. I don't know if Dude is going to be able to pull it off. I'm, I'm very anxious and, and I'm, I'm, I think that he'll do well. Um, we'll see. I'm not sure.